I am Sammy P. Welcome to episode 19 of my Let's Voice series for Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. It's the series where I use the excuse of practicing my voice acting to justify playing video games. And if you're watching the video and you're enjoying yourself, as always, it is fantastic if you like, share, and subscribe the video. Subscribe to the video, I guess. Uh, and it's really a wonderful way to help grow the channel. Uh, apparently there's a little bell. You press the little bell if you want to hear it when if you want to be get notified when I uh, post new videos. And ultimately, if you're not enjoying the video, constructive criticism is always appreciated. The dislike button is also just there. And yeah, I think that's all the YouTube preamble I need. Alright, we were about to leave Dunnage. We got attacked. And then I remembered about our acting friend who we now have the money to pay for, and I might as well do that now. Give him, I want to say 3,000 copper, which is a lot, but to get a bonus to our... I do have the money, right? Yes. Um, there's actually another one, which I, I discovered. Um, there's another one of these of these, of these these uh, trainers, and that one, uh, I think, is in the... Oh, there's a conversation going on. Gargoyles uh, can be really nasty. You're lucky that's all you got to show for it. Oh, up the top. Oh, it's between Shoti and Aloth. How'd you come by that scar on your brow, Aloth? Uh, this? Oh, I found myself in a rather ooh, precarious situation with a band of Dargoyles. Oh, Dargoyles can be right nasty. You're lucky that's all you got to show for it. Oh, I, I certainly gave them worse. Not to boast, of course. Oh, Aloth, you flustered fool. Uh, yeah, this guy. Quell Marcellus. Pleasure to see you! Whatever might I do for you? Uh, look, we talked about this before, but can you teach me what you've learnt in your travels as a performer? I would be honoured! But a man needs to make a living, you know. So, for my services, how about... 3,000 copper. Well, here you are. Fantastic! Let's get to it then. His training is idiosyncratic. He starts by describing a character he'd like you to play. A street tough, an embittered sailor, a noble on the throes of a tantrum. Then he recites lines to you, asking you to recite them back in the attitude of your character. He then shows you how to use those characters to trick people into giving you what they want. And when you show him what you've got, he gives you a wide smile and bids you farewell. You have learnt Cole's training. But there's the little... Is it Cole or is it Coel? Nah. And that just gives me... What is that actually? Plus one buff, plus one speed rise. That's fun. I had a little... I've got my... Bluff is the one that is useful. I don't think I've really been using it. I'm more using diplomacy. But it's nice to have, and a little bit extra. Uh, the other one, I think, is explosives and mechanics, which I don't particularly need, although it does mean I give bonuses to everyone else, I guess, who would actually be the ones uh, doing the work. But I will do that uh, later. That'll be for another day. Where's the... There it is. Alright, now we actually leave. Now that we've had our tuition. And we're going to go... We're going to go to Nekataka. Actually going to go to Nekataka this time. I'm... I, I'm... Ugh, excited. Alright, no locations. We're not going there. We're going... Hopefully not getting attacked by another ship that completely... Out oh... Fuck off. Shit. I realized while editing that it tells me their level. So I'm level 6, they're level 10. That's... This is not... Uh, Ramda Rigari uh, points to a dark spot on the, on the horizon. Hopton, a vessel approaches. That's not his, his voice. Why would I... Doesn't matter. Squint on the horizon. Unfamiliar colors. Nope. Water to flee. Uh, with all possible haste, the uh, enemy vessel recedes behind you until finally it disappears 
from the horizon. All right, we don't. If we if we flee that way, we don't lose morale. Good to know. I guess that's. I don't know what that's based on. Like what the chance of that happening is. Yeah, increase the morale. Because we we gave them better food. I'm trying to. Okay, just want to zoom out so I can actually see what I'm revealing. What's the map? Oh, oh, it's actually, it looks like a, that's pretty cool. I think that's where I want to kill the scuttle that ship. Oh, stuff's happening. Stop. Oh. The ring of a bell comes to you in a cold wind. Oh no. The ring comes again and again, until soon the air is full with the sound of a thousand, thousand bells ringing all at once. You feel a resonance in your core, a bell ringing in tune with the others. Something in you bends, then breaks, and you are borne away on the ringing tide, just another peal among the many. The tide of bells recedes. The lever, you lever yourself up onto your knees and realize you have been here before. You stand in Barath's realm. You are alone. And then, there, you are not. Oh, let's see. This one is the winter one, I'm assuming. Uh, Ramagrund, or how you pronounce that? That looks like Barath. <sighs> Margan, probably. Yeah, my, my, my religious, my religion skill clearly isn't high enough. An indistinct figure stands before you, flickering between forms like a fire cast shadow. A fixed, taunting grin. Bottomless black eyes. A yawning chasm in the earth. The aspects of Berath, the Usher, and the Pallid Knight shift in and out of focus. And at their back, four indistinct shades hover. You feel an eternity stretch out before each of them, reaching back to places so distant and yet so near, you cannot comprehend their size. The shifting image of Berath settles on the aspect of the pallid night. Watcher. Her voice is the discordant clangor of gongs struck out of time. I tasked you to discover Eathus's intentions. Tell me what you have learned. Uh, just around. <sighs> He's draining souls from veins of luminous Adra. The pallid knight. I was going to be clever, but I feel like maybe being short with the gods is not entirely the best idea. The pallid knight knits her brow. He does not seek to return to the beyond? Intriguing. Her sickly pale skin pulls tight across the bones of her face, as if the shell of this aspect does not quite fit the impossible creature it contains. The figure nearest Barath dissolves and reforms in the image of a thin-lipped ancient crone whose face has felt the mel melting kiss of fire. Oh, is this one? Margan, not this one. Oh, no. It's Wodisha. The goddess Wodisha. Justice Laura promises rulership. Yep. Wodisha, is that correct? I think that's how you pronounce it. Does Aethus frighten you, Berath? He should. Margren subdued Aethus's influence once before, and yet he returned. From out of Odisha's uh, shadow shuffles a hunched, bald man you recognize as the god Skane. His skin is mapped with swollen lash scars. The breath whistles through the ragged hole of his face where his nose once was. He does not speak 
but stares up at Wodisha with naked loathing plain on his ruined face. Wodisha steeples her long, knob-jointed fingers. We must annihilate Aethus now, before he makes a rash decision we cannot easily annul. She casts a sly look at the pallid knight from the corners of her eyes. A moon would do the job nicely. Uh, given, uh, given her relationship with the moon, I doubt Ondra would approve of that plan. Odisha throws her head back and laughs. The sound is a dry, rasping bark. Ondra could do with a new act. Her current one has grown rather stale. Where are the other gods? They see fit. They see to their own affairs. You will speak to them in time, should you have the need. The figure beside the aspect of Barath flows forward in a swirling cloud of ash. The ash falls to the tiles and reveals a molten-skinned woman leaning on a monstrous, wicked-edged broadsword. Margren's Glowing lips curl in disdain. We must find a solution to the problem of Aethus that is neither do nothing nor destroy the world. I acted in haste during the Saints' War. You will not goad me into doing the same now. To move against him while his plans are unknown would be the height of foolishness. We must find wisdom in precaution. What kind of precautions do you suggest? Margaret looks at you as one might a wayward glob of spit on one shoe. It is no business of yours what the gods decide. Another of the silent figures steps forward and the warm, golden light of a summer's afternoon spills across your face. Let's all take a deep, calming breath. Perhaps cooler heads will prevail. Behind Haley's words, you hear the soft coo of doves. Aethus has been separated from us for too long. Isn't it possible he intends only to gather enough souls to reclaim his realm in the beyond? He should be welcomed. You look up, then, into Avon eyes. Through them you see clouds of starlings converge and divide. What if he intends to betray you? Haley puts a feathered hand to her chest. He wouldn't betray is not in his nature. Skeen shuffles forward. Yes. Yes, he would... We should welcome Aethus. Sorry. Yes. Yes. We should welcome Aethus's return to the fold. His gratitude we can leverage to conjole him into divulging his plot. Sorry, that was a lot of fun. Then, when he believes himself to be in our good graces, we do as Rodisha suggests and crash him into the earth. Skane pauses, inspecting you. Ah, uh, here is the Watcher who killed Lord Harond the man who tormented his dear niece, Ailish. Curious. Skein licks the ragged edge of his lipless mouth and grins, then turns to Haley. I did not expect such a deliciously ruthless idea from you, Haley. I am impressed. 
Haley's feathered crest stands on edge. You, you wretched little creature. Attempting to end Aethus may only make things worse. Your point is well made. Oh, sorry. Your point is well made, little watcher. It's self-evident. Aethus has not been known to possess a vindictive nature. Indeed, he has occasionally been magnanimous to a fault. However... If we push him to the brink of reason, there is no telling what he may do. He is, as ever, unpredictable. Something akin to fondness creeps into her voice. <sighs> then what's the point of this exercise? The pallid knight gestures for silence. Aethus cannot be killed. But he may be subdued. Yet to do so will take immense power and time. Both stand in his favor. Margarine grits her black glass teeth. That is why we must ascertain his plans before he has the chance to put them into motion. She begins to pace. Her steps leave little trails of fire in her wake. Magrin stops and balls her hands into flaming fists. Even if we manage to destroy his current form, there is the possibility he could return if he has not already absorbed all of his children. Absorbed his children? I, I don't understand. The pallid knight casts a cold, cutting glare in Magrin's direction. Magrin speaks too freely. That knowledge is beyond your ken, Watcher. Rodisha waves the gods to silent. Aethus gathers strength. His strength is the threat is a threat to us. Her voice takes on a sharp, almost panicked edge. There is no sensible answer to the questions of a resurgent Aethus other than decisive final action. There's no cause to act now. Your opinion is unasked for, but noted. We will act when it is appropriate to do so, and not before. The pallid knight steps away from the half-circle of assembled guards. She pulls herself up to a great height. The words she speaks next come not from her mouth, but from all around you. Follow him, Watcher. The black of the pallid knight's iris expands until her eyes are as dark and cold as the void between stars. She bends down and brings her ghostly face level with your own. Your debt to me remains unpaid. I kind of want to be like, this is bullshit, but... I'll do what I can. She stares at you unblinkingly. Un no, sorry. She stares at you, unblinking. Like a needle drawn to a magnet, you are pulled towards her one... Uh, you are pulled towards toward her one compulsory step at a time. Helpless to resist, you tumble into her impossible eyes. You fall wildly, endlessly, unable to find your bearings or slow your spin. And in the distance, above, no, behind you, comes an insistent ringing. You angle yourself towards it, searching for the sound. A small silver bell appears just inches from your fingertips. You reach for it, straining to still its uh, interminable ringing. The moment you touch it, your soul slams into your body with all the force of a fall from the top of the sky. You blink open your eyes, and you find yourself on the floor of your ship's cabin, alone. 
I thought we were going to get it. I thought we were being attacked by the, the that ghost ship, but while on the deck of the ship, you can select uh, to access the world map. Oh, fair enough. Fragments of the Blade of Endless Paths. The mythic blade of the catacombs of Cadnua was destroyed when Aethas emerged from behind the keep. The shards are no longer of use to anyone unless they could be re reforged. This weapon may be fated to become even more than it was. Ooh. Fragments of Whispers of Yenwood. Despite being utterly destroyed when the devastation of Cadnua, the sword known as the Whispers of Yenwood has, has once again found its way into the possession of the keep's road warden, albeit in pieces. It would take a smith of some talent to reforge the weapon. With the right materials, however, perhaps the sword could become even greater than it once was. I mean, sure. To the stash with you. Letter from Ufra. Hirschwaldgeist. I hope this letter finds you in good health. It has been many summers now since you first arrived in Gilded Vale. Oh, excuse me. Much has changed in those years for both of us. I do not know if you remember me, but the day you came to my door is not one I will forget. For months afterwards, I wrestled with my faith and my fear. And still the gods have blessed me with a son. He is healthy and strong and already so curious. All of Gilded Vale dotes upon him. I have told him of you. He asks constantly after the Watcher who restored his spirit and hopes one day to meet you. Until then, know that we keep you in our prayers. Your most grateful servant, Eufra? Eufra. Is that the mother from the first game who you give, you give a potion to? And I'm pretty sure I told her the potion wouldn't work. I mean sweet all the same. Talk to my dog? No. Uh, yeah, that was that was interesting. I thought it was the ghost ship, like I was saying. Um, but getting to voice all the different gods, I completely forgot what voice I did for the pallet knight at the um, beginning of the game, but... <laughs> uh, I did like coming up with different cadences of them. That was a lot of, that was actually a lot of fun. All right. <laughs> oh, hi. You're all here. I guess we're going to talk to, uh, my, my lord, what, what do you require? How did I get a ship in the first place? With Cadnua in ruins, there was little purpose in waxing sentimental over the rubble. I was able to salvage enough of your treasure and wealth to afford the purchase of the Defiant and hire of, and the hire of a small crew. Unfortunately, that consumed the remainder of your once considerable assets. Under the circumstances, I hoped you would not object. So what should I do next? I suggest we proceed to Nekataka, my lord. It is the largest city in Deadfire, and we shall be better able to get our bearings there. All right, farewell. Just talk to everyone. Ship life sure is an adventure, is ain't it? Ship life sure is an adventure, ain't it? Just think of all the places we can sail to, all the sights we could see. This is nothing like being stuck on a farm or cloistered back in the back of a temple. Shoti wraps her sickle against her thigh as she studies the boat's layout. Satisfied by whatever she sees, she tilts her head back to you with a small smile. Tell me, what's on your mind? How are you feeling? Have you suffered uh, any recent nightmares? They're in my head when I sleep. And sometimes I can taste them on the back of my tongue. Like a smear of grit. It happens when I take in a particularly volatile soul. Well, don't worry. We'll, we'll figure something out. Will we? Ought we? I just don't know. Pinching the bridge of her nose with dirty fingers, Shoti sighs. I trust you, Watcher. I swear, I do. I just, I worry sometimes about what's going to happen to me, but, well, it 
it's not like I can turn my back on my duty to my god, even if it kills me. Is Aelof even here to hear that? Guess not. How is it you came to be a worshipper of Gorn more than that, uh, more so than of Aethus? My folks, you might say they're not your typical Aethesians. Sure, they cling to the light more than the darkness. But the war, it touched my family. It changed them, killed some, not that I remember firsthand. She sniffs. The others toughened, turned survivors. That much I saw with my own eyes, even years later. Are there other like, other others? Are there others like you? Other Gornites out there? Oh, of course. Though we're few and spread out. Most don't keep to temples. Soul shepherding requires travel. <laughs> I'm guessing on a small ship, everyone just sort of hears everything, so. My aunt's the one who taught me about the cycle of life and death. How everything happens in stages. Whether forwards or backwards, from seed to rot to rebirth again, it's all just states of existence and balance, see? That's how I first learned about the slice of gone within Aethus. She grins big, confident and happy. After that, I read all the doctrines of gone. Anything and everything I could get my hands on. Well, such as Twelve books of Nirwith, plus the epistles from the Minor Prophets. A lot of them aren't a part of today's canonization, but that doesn't mean they're wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Someone changed the canon, but I like the old canon better. The Star Wars joke in there somewhere. Anyway. Focus. She crosses her arms over her chest, expression pinched. It's tradition for the youngest born to take up the priesthood of Aethus. Well, I did it in my own way. Well, let's speak of something else. Well, no need to fiddle foot around. I'm listening. That, that's all for now. I'm glad we talked. Who else is down here? Arena... Shield Sister Dahlia. Every time I read Shield Sister, and I did this, I think I did it when I first started, I was like, Shield Sister, won't you sail with me, Shield Sister? We'll sail across the sea, Shield Sister. Uh, I enjoy it. Let's talk to you. Oh, what new shores are we sailing for today? The sea's no place for glass. I've sailed far worse. Ahoy there, Captain. Oh, Aeloth is right there. And Adair's right there as well. Oh, interesting. Maybe that is that is the case. They are in the same room, so they can benefit from the Mariner salutes. Well, that is the episode. Where are we? There we are. I don't know about you, but I enjoyed that a whole lot. Like, I've been enjoying this whole thing, but that episode just flew by for me. That was just... That was a whole lot of fun. Um, particularly, I guess, after the frustration of finding that goddamn unripened palm stone. But doing just... Like, the whole point of the video, as I've said, I say every video is to practice the voice acting, and just bouncing between those gods was so much fun for me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, I, and if you did, obviously, the YouTube spiel, liking, sharing, subscribing, clicking the little bell, summons, bear, bear, summons you to Barath, that bell. Uh, and if you didn't like it, obviously, dislike button's fine. Constructive criticism is better. Comments. Always welcome. Non-spoilering tips. Tell me. 
man, that was that was a lot of fun. I'm 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 psyched. Kind of wish I could. I kind of want to keep recording, and I can't. I've got stuff to do, and that's. Oh, I want to just. Oh, all right. Uh, huh. Next episode is episode twenty. I was arming and ahhing about doing a longer episode because I don't. Like I said, when I did the longer episode, episode 10, it's not amazingly a good idea because a lot of people, I don't have a huge following and people aren't watching uh, the longer videos. And to be honest, they're not really watching the shorter videos. I'm... Like, share, and subscribe. But I had such a good time. I'm now thinking maybe I will just do a longer episode because I just want to talk to everyone on the ship, really just sort of like have a, have a, have a solid chat with everyone on the ship and then go on to Nekatuck and then actually getting stuck into Nekataka, so I don't know how long that's going to take, so maybe I will do a longer episode for episode 20. If I was recording right now, I would definitely do a longer episode for episode 20, but, like I said, unfortunately, I've got stuff to do. Work beckons, and I, I cannot say no. But that was episode 19. I hope you enjoyed it. I've been Sammy P. Come back for episode 20. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm super excited for it. See you then.